Okay, welcome to my filthy table. Today I dug out my old Yashikomat LM, and I figured, what the hell, let's do a fun video going over how to use it and load it and smelling it. So first up, this is the camera in its ever ready slash never ready case. A little cracked, a little worn. The first thing you need to know to get into this is you pop off the back button here, it flips down, you can either let this dangle while you go photographing, or you can pull it off and have some nice leather protection on your camera. Or if you don't want to be bothered with this at all, you can pull up these tabs. That will free your, your ever-ready case in the camera. And just pull it over so it gets past the knobs. Oh shit. Don't pull it that hard. I just ripped the hell out of that. Oh. This is an old camera, it's a little, little rusty right now, or it's a little, little fragile right now, so handle it with better care than I am. To this side, we gotta just pull open the rewind knob so it can fit around. There we go, your ripped, never ready case is now off to the leather man to get restitched. So this was actually the very first medium format camera I owned. I believe I got it sometime around spring 2007 when I was driving through a rural Minnesota and just happened across an estate sale. Stopped in to see what was for sale and this camera was sitting there for I think about $50. The people said it was their, their father's who he bought it and he's the only owner so I'm technically I'm probably the second owner of this camera and it's oh my god the batteries ran out of the light! Okay, I plugged the light back in with power cord, so it's not gonna run out in this anymore. But anyways, where was I? Okay, I found this at a state sale, 50 bucks, yeah, first owner, second owner, da 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 da. I didn't shoot with it very much because not long after getting it, I bought the more popular Yashikomat 124G. So we're gonna do a little, little comparisons on what are some of the differences between the very popular 124G and the not so popular LM. So let's remove the lens cap. First up, as you can see, the styling is a bit different. The 124 is more modern and goth looking, all dark, while the LM has some nice chrome accents, these beautiful buttons and this kind of cowboy font where it says Yashica. I really like that Yashica font, it's, it's nice. On the technical side, the top viewing lens on the LM is a f3.2, whereas the 124 is an f2.8. So when you are looking into these cameras to take your photograph, the image in the 124G is going to be slightly brighter if they have the same ground glass quality inside of them. So a second notable difference between the 124 and the older LM is that if you notice the, the shutter release button does not have a thread mount on it. So as you can see, without the thread mount, you can't attach a cable release. You could poke it, but that's not the best way to use these. So what this means, if you want to take a longer exposure, like a second, you either have to push it and hope you don't shake the camera while it's on a tripod, or if you're in the bulb mode where it stays open as long as you hold it down, you'd have to actually sit there and with your finger just hold it and then release. And Normally on a good clean camera that'll pop up immediately, but this one's getting old and looks like it's a little bit sticky. So the workaround for this particular issue on the LM, what we need to do is you take this, this thumb collar around here and just loosen that up. It'll unscrew. Before you remove that, you go to eBay or some other site that sells weird things and you buy this nipple adapter. Hopefully YouTube doesn't ban me for saying the word nipple in this video. So with the ring missing, it'll screw on over the button. And now it provides a thread to attach your favorite cable release. And now my friends, you can now have a steady cable release release. Oh, isn't that beautiful? So also, one of the differences between the LM and the 124G is that the shutter does not have any prevention for accidental exposures. As you can see on here on the 124G, if you take this little knob and spin it over to the L, you can't 
accidentally released a shutter. Whereas on the LM, there is no such device. So once you've cocked the camera by cranking the arm, you gotta be careful not to bump that button or you're gonna accidentally take a picture. So let's move on to the basic operation of the camera. As like any other TLR, to focus the image, you have to pop up the hood and then you will peek down into here and the image will appear on the ground glass. You can see my lamp on there if you look close enough. You focus by just turning the knob on the left until whatever you want is in focus. The two wheels over here control your shutter speed and aperture. So as you're holding the camera and looking down, you'll see the, the shutter speed indicator right here and the f-stop indicator right here. And as you rotate each one, it will show you what your current settings are at. Easy peasy. Then, as I said before, you have to have the, it has to be wound. Then you bring it back and now it's ready to shoot a picture by just pushing the button. Exposure made, crank it around once. You can feel a little tension when it's done advancing so you know to wheel it back and then there you go. Ready to keep on shooting. So while I can't confirm if this is true or not, I like to believe that the LM for the, in the Yashica mat, LM stands for light meter because it comes with a light meter. It's an old selenium style light meter that doesn't require batteries, just kind of always works until it wears out and gets old. That's what the, the, the grid here is where the light gets red. And on the top we have the, the, the light meter indicator right here. As you can see, it's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with a little color stripe that matches up with this needle to tell you what your exposure value is. Mine actually works, so as you can tell as I add some light to the scene, look at it jump. Oh, it's getting brighter, it's getting even brighter. It's, oh, it's dance party mode. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Anyways, dance party over. Once, once your needle is at a spot in the scene, let's just say, for example, in this particular scene that it ended in the six mode, what you then do is rotate to the knob over here. So now that we have our EV of six, first thing we want to notice is that we have our ASA slash ISO set to our film speed. And that can be adjusted by just using these little thumb thumb buttons here and rotating it to your film speed. Let's pretend we have 400 in there. And now what we do is along the edge of this rim, it's kind of hard to see, is a little dot kind of punched into it. You want to match that number up to that dot. And now normally there would be more of these little thumb buttons here, but as I pulled this camera out and was playing with it before shooting this video, they both broke off from old age. This whole thing is just falling apart. So I'm gonna use a pen to rotate it. So we just rotate it to it says, six, oh, gotta hold the focus or else it's gonna move. Get our dot on there, number six. And now we just read any of these exposures for the proper exposure, such as F8 at 1 2 50th. Now I would make sure that if you plan on using this to calibrate it against a known working light meter because these are old and you might get unpredictable results if it's gone off by a few stops. This one in particular was about one stop slower than my normal light meter. So it's actually fairly accurate for being 60 years old. When the hell is this made? The 50s? 60s? Old. So if you want to use the built-in light meter and it works, that's how you do that. Though I probably recommend just using an external light meter because external light meters are great and work for all of your cameras. So now that we've come this far, it's time for the main course, how to load film into this beautiful camera. First things first, 35 millimeter, wrong film. Get it out of here. What you're gonna need is a good roll of 120 film, medium format. Look at that, 120, not millimeters, 120. And don't at me because this roll is exposed and ruined. I know how people like to get when they're like, oh, a waste of film if it didn't actually take pictures. But you know what? So here's the deal. Once you get into medium format photography, this thing happens where every so often you get a new camera and you start loading it for the first time and you realize you totally loaded it the wrong way. And what does that do? It ruins the film. So what you do is you take that ruined film and you keep it and you keep re-rolling it over and over and then anytime you acquire a new medium format camera or need to do a demo on YouTube, 
you re-roll that old film so you could show it in the daylight without wrecking anything. And that is awesome. Once I get this re-rolled, there we go. It's, it's now rolled on the wrong way, like it's finished, so. So give me a moment while I put this onto the other reel so it's in the same state as a fresh roll of film. And there we go. We now have a seemingly normal roll of film to load into our 124, nope, into our Yashkomat LM. Let's go. So one quick, uh, one more difference between the 124 and the LM that I want to point out before loading that is that the 124G has the settings between 12 exposures and 24 exposures, which you use if you're loading 220 length film instead of 120 length film. Now the, the LM, on the other hand, is very specific about using 120, notice a lack of millimeters, film only. The thing is, at the point of recording this in 2020, nobody is manufacturing 220 length film anymore. So it's not really a concern that this doesn't take 220 unless your kink is shooting expired film and you have a lot of 220 around then you're not gonna use this camera because you'll be boned to trying to load it in there. Or maybe sometime in the year 2030 you'll see this and 220 will be back, 120 will be extinct, and then this camera will be completely irrelevant. Regardless, 120 only. Don't try to put your long boy 24 exposures in here. It's not gonna work. So, to load the film, finally. Make sure your, your ever-ready case is off because it would be really hard to do this with that on. And then on the bottom, Rotates, open, close. You want to rotate it to the left towards the open, and then it's going to open up for you. Something like this. So ideally, there's going to be an existing spindle in here from the previous roll of film. If you don't have one, you got to find one or you can't load this camera. So you take that like normal and move it into the take up spot up here. These pull out to let the spindles get released. So put it in there and rotate this until it snaps back in. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Take up reel is secured. Now we take our roll of fresh, totally perfect, not exposed film. Tab, tab up this way. Put it on to this side's little little nipple. I'm gonna say nipple again to get this video banned. And make sure this is pulled open so that there's room for the film to get in there. This, this looks way worse than it is because I'm at an awkward angle that I wouldn't normally load this just to get the view on the camera. So I don't usually struggle this hard. So we get that to line up and that's locked in. There we go. And now we Take our, oh, oh. Want to advance this until the, the slot on the spindle is at an angle where you can get the, the tab into it quite easily. Get it in there nice and started and slowly turn it until the film starts taking up. And just advance it until the arrow meets the red arrow. Now we slam it shut and rotate the bottom in the, the clockwise direction until it's locked in. And you take your little, little, little advanced wheel and just, until it stops. And there you go, your camera is now ready to take the most amazing silent street photography this world has ever seen. <laughs>